Adel Bilkwe, of the Woman Workshop. Today, on a chat with the experts, I'm joined by Dr. Francis Edelmanpo of Lagos University, Jim Hatton. We are going to be talking about breast cancer. Doctor, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. Yes. So, Doctor, um, there is, um, it seems to be that there is an increase in the number of women who are going through breast cancer. Is there an increase or are the numbers consistent or what exactly is going on? Okay. Thank you. Cancer generally occurs when normal, normal cells, they have a lifespan. They grow, get a certain uh, size, stop growing, and then die by a process called apoptosis. There are uh, checks and balances that God has put in place that regulates how cells grow. The human body is made up of millions upon millions of cells. So what happens in cancer is that these cells that make up different parts of the body somehow start have dysregulation. As in, they are not being regulated by these checks and balances that God has put in place to control their growth. So they start growing beyond their boundaries. That's why it grows into a lump. You see a lump on the ribs on the breast, you say it's breast cancer. If it's on the intestine, you say colon cancer. If it's on the rectum, you say erectile cancer. So a cancer can arise from any part of the body. Just when the cells, in quote, begin to misbehave and grow abnormally due to some things that are inciting them. Sometimes there may be a direct cause, sometimes there is no known cause. But there are always risk factors that I should deal with these cancers. So what we are discussing today is cancer arising from the breast, breast cancer. So the question is whether breast cancer has been on the increase or it's been the same. The answer to that question is a yes and no, but more of like a yes. Hmm? Yes and no, because in the past, the diagnosis of breast cancer is not as much as it is today. And awareness of breast cancer isn't as much as it is today. So today, more people know about breast cancer. It's everywhere, it's on the news, it's on the social media, it's on television. And people are becoming more educated now. And there is increased health-seeking behavior so that there is more awareness about breast cancer. Yeah. So the increased awareness makes more people to now know about it and then it will now appear like it's on the rise. On the other part, it might be on the rise because increasingly we are having more and more women that are being exposed to certain factors which are termed risk factors. What are these, what are which these are, risk factors? Okay, certain factors which are termed risk factors for this breast cancer. Yes. Number one is fine. If someone has a family history of, so, of someone that has a breast cancer, maybe in a family a woman has a breast cancer and the woman has a female child, the female has a, an increased likelihood of having breast cancer. Women who start prolonged uh, estrogen action. Estrogen is a male sex hormone produced by the ovaries. So for women who uh, attain menopause, who attain uh, uh, menarche, that's, who start uh, seeing their menses early, they are at risk of having breast cancer because they have prolonged period of estrogen action. Also, women who attain menopause late also have increased uh, likelihood of having breast cancer. The average age of menopause in Nigeria across the world is 51 years. We have some women that are 55, they are still seeing their menses. So they're having prolonged estrogen action. So those women are also at risk of having breast cancer. Women who uh, have their first child after the age of 30, they are also at increased risk of having breast cancer. Increasingly these days, Age of marriage is increasing. Before, at 18, 20 years, most women are married and they finish having their children. By, they would have finished having their children by age 25. But these days, at age 30, most people aren't married. They are beginning to have their children at age 35, yeah. which is the risk factor we are talking about. And also, the increased uh, quality of life and increased life expectancy generally. Advanced, matter, advanced age. So most women now, tend to live longer. Unlike before, when life expectancy for women in Nigeria was 48 years, now it has risen to 53 years. We get to see men that live up to 60, 70 years. So the longer a woman stays in this world, it increases the increase in the likelihood of a person coming down with breast cancer. 
Also, women who have had some form of radiation, maybe radiation for other cancers or too much exposure to X-rays, all those radiation can also predispose to having cervical cancer or having breast cancer. Also, women that have had chemotherapy, so they can be uh, also uh, 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 at risk of having breast cancer. So these are some of the uh, risk factors. Also, women who have attained menopause and are being uh, placed on hormone replacement therapy, yes. because this hormone replacement therapy is kind of at menopause, the, is, the ovaries are no longer working. Estrogen is no longer being produced in substantial amount in, by the ovaries. Yes. So we are giving is uh, we are giving uh, estrogenous. We are giving uh, estrogen to replace what is not being produced in the body. So that estrogen can also predispose uh, the woman to having breast cancer. So the breast cancer arises solely from the direct effect of estrogen action. So anything direct effect of estrogen action. So if you take off estrogen, someone, a woman most likely won't have breast cancer. Also too, there are also other genes that are heritable that we call breast cancer gene. There are two types of it, PRAC, breast cancer gene 1 and breast cancer gene 2. So for people that have a family history of breast cancer, yes. when, they check in those, uh, when they check for those genes in them, they may have them, they have them in their offspring. Those offspring have increased likelihood of having breast cancer and even colon cancer. Like we are aware of uh, the famous actress Angelina Jolie, the mother died of breast cancer, and she checked for the BRCA gene and she had a prophylactic mastectomy to remove both breasts so that she doesn't come that way. Because having both genes, she has about 80% chance of having breast cancer later in life. So she had to take both breasts out. So those are some of the risk factors for uh, breast cancer. Okay, sir. Um, but a lot of the things that you said, it was as if uh, you were saying that the woman's body just, uh, like, a woman started menses early, it's not her fault. A woman um, entering menopause late is not her fault. Estrogen is not the woman's fault. So it's as if our body, uh, as women, are fighting us, giving us breast cancer. There is, I, I didn't hear a lot of uh, external factors here. Okay. Yeah. Like we said, breast cancer is commonest. It's not like it cannot occur in men. It also occurs in men, but the percentage is very small. So, but the number one risk factor for having breast cancer is being a woman. Just being a woman predisposes someone to having breast cancer because the percentage in men is less than 2%. Yeah, so the women have the large burden of the disease. So just being a woman is a risk factor for breast cancer. Also, there are some women that you will see, they come down with breast cancer, you check most of all these risk factors, they are not uh, present in them, they do not have this risk factor, but they still come down with breast, with breast cancer. So sometimes it's just being a woman. Just being a woman is a risk factor for having breast cancer. Thank you, sir. Uh, I read in a tweet somewhere. Somebody tweeted something and said that uh, the women who have breast cancer is because they show their cleavage that they wear indecent uh, clothing. So, doctor, please, can you tell us if this is true? Does indecent dressing have anything to do with the woman having breast cancer? Medically, exposing the cleavage, exposing the breast, does not have anything to do with breast cancer. Did you guys say, Dr. Please say it again, just so we clean the body down. <laughs> it does not have anything to do with breast cancer. Indecent dressing doesn't have anything to do with breast cancer. What I highlighted some risk factors, like exposure to radiation, like x-rays and ionizing radiation generally, they are, the risk, they are part of the risk factors. But exposing the breast or indecent dress in a coat has nothing to do with breast cancer. Okay. I say that categorically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, during the course of this um, interview, a woman uh, sent me a message. She said that um, there's um, water coming out of the breast when breast um, have anything to do with it. Does, it, does it send the cancer alert? Okay. There are various uh, forms that uh, breast cancer manifests. There are various modes of presentation. A breast cancer often uh, presents as a lump in the breast. The lump might initially be painless, firm, 
you feel that your breast doesn't feel the way it used to feel. You may feel a hardness. Or when you look at the breast, normally the breasts are they, are, they are not exactly of the same shape. But there is, this, there is symmetry. If there is a deviation from the shape, for a woman that, has, that knows what the shape of her breast looks like, she will know when there is a change. There may be um, swelling on the breast, but that's at the later, later age, at later, later stage. There may be nipple deviation, even might be deviated. And then they may have... Uh, nipple deviation, the, breast, the nipple moves. Yeah, nipple that was normally out can move inwards or can be tilted to one side. A deviation, a, a shift from what it used to be. Okay. So those are telltale signs that something is going wrong. The skin might look cracked. It will change from what it used to be. And there's what we call pure derange, but that's at the later, later stage for disease, and advanced stage of breast cancer. We're going to see that. But whenever there are, there are skin changes that once you notice it, it, should, it, should raise, it raise a red alert. You should go see your doctor. About uh, what are coming out of your breast when pressed, it's not a normal presentation, it's not a presentation for breast cancer. It's called galactoria. We see that in women who uh, have hyperprolactinemia, prolactin level is a hormone that produces in the brain that uh, controls the secretion of milk. So when a woman is not uh, nursing a baby, normally you shouldn't produce uh, breast milk. Water shouldn't come out of the breast, except if she is lactating, if she is uh, nursing a baby. When it's not nursing a baby, we we'll have some women bringing uh, uh, breast milk from their breast, from their nipple. And that is often seen in women who are trying to conceive. They are kind of, in fact, when, they, when that occurs, it's kind of difficult for the woman to get pregnant. So we see that a lot with a lot of women with infertility due to hyperprolactinemia. And it's treatable. So when you have that, you should go see your gynecologist and then it will be sorted that there are medications you can do to correct that. But it's not uh, a sign of breast cancer. Breast cancer will rather present as bloody discharge from the nipple. Bloody discharge and then discharge of water or they are not the same thing. Okay. Bloody discharge is a telltale sign for breast cancer, for ductal carcinoma of the breast. Okay. So, um, what other symptoms are, are these the symptoms to look out for when somebody has breast cancer? Um, blood coming out, nipple deviation, skin cracking, and, um, breast lump, hardness or softness. Or breast lump, breast lump, hardness, a lump in the breast. It may be initially painless. It could be painful. So generally, these things they do not just come on. So for breast cancer, the issue is about early detection. Like in all cancers, they are all most of them, if they are detected early it can be treated. Yes. Or, in fact, whether it can be treated very well and will have a good outcome depends on the stage at which it was detected. Yes. So that's actually the reason for this um, awareness campaign that is going on everywhere. The thing is that most of these women that come down with these cancers come at a late advanced stage where you can't do so much. Whereas if this was captured, if this was detected early, they could have complete cure. So for a woman that is coming with a stage one disease, you could have complete treatment and uh, you have complete cure. So when these things start at, as a small lump in the breast, it shouldn't be, if you feel a small lump on the breast, it shouldn't be neglected. Feeling a small lump means you should go see your doctor and then it should be properly evaluated. There, there are different tests that will be done, like some of them involve taking some tissue samples from the lung to look at it under the microscope to study to know if it's a normal change or if it's a malignant change. So those are just the issues. So it's very important. And these days we counsel and teach women to do self breast examination every month so that and so that women will get used to their breasts and know what the breast looks like so that at the slightest time when there's any change they can pick it up. I want to know um, what other what other ways can we as women help ourselves to battle breast cancer to ensure that we don't have breast cancer? How can we help ourselves? Okay, like I said earlier on, what uh, determines determines the outcome depends on the stage at presentation of the disease. 
if the disease is detected early, it can be fully treated. But for someone that is presenting at a late stage, the outcome might be poor. So to catch breast cancer early, we are beginning to teach people what we call self-breast examination. So every woman or every woman that has given birth to a woman, women should teach their daughters, women should teach their female friends, women should teach their mothers. So this is something like we can be teaching our children, not yes. just sex education, yes. we'll also be teaching them how to yes. do self-breast examination. Yes. And how do we do self-breast examination? So they should teach other women, their children, their mothers, their friends, on how to do self-breast examination. Ow. People should get used to their breasts. To do self-breast examination is, uh, you do it at a particular time of the month, preferably one week after your period ends. Assuming the period starts today and the period ends, when the period ends is the best time for you to do the self-breast examination. So you look at the breast in the mirror Preferably maybe when you are going to have your bath. So you stand and look at the breast. So you get used to the size of the, your breast and the shape of your breast. And you get used to what the nipple looks like and the areola around the nipple and the skin around the nipple. You know what the norm is. So when it changes, when nipple deviates, you will know. When there is a lump bumping up, you will know. When there is skin changes, you will know. When there is uh, redness or something, you would know. If you've gotten used to what your normal breast, what your breast looks like on a normal day, then you hold, you put your hand by your side akimbo. This kind of flexes the muscle. The breast lies on top of the pectoralis muscle as a muscle down there. So if you do this, well, it tenses the muscles and then brings out the breast tissue, so you can see the shape properly. And then you go a bit further, the next stage will be to use the flat of the hand. Flat of the, hand. the hand, you go from there, you can divide the breast into four quadrants. If it's a circle, divide it into four. How mentally dividing it? Yeah, mentally or physically, maybe I, wrote, I, write, I draw this. This is this, like the breast, you divide it into four quadrants. Hmm? Okay. You have the upper inner quadrant. Okay. So you go this way. You press, you palpate for any lump or hardness okay. around this upper inner quadrant. Oh. Then you look at the upper outer quadrant. Oh, okay. eh? yeah. So you go to the uh, no. lower outer quadrant. Okay. And then you go to the, uh, in, uh, the lower inner quadrant. Oh. And then you end by pressing the nipples okay. gently around the areola to see if there is anything coming out. Okay. If there is anything. Yes, normally nothing should come out. Okay. If you have a bloody discharge from the nipple, it's a tail disease for that there's a problem. So you should go see your doctor. If you palpate a lump, you should go see your doctor. Normally, women between the ages of 18 and 25, at that uh, age bracket, they normally have some changes in their breast that most of the time they'll palpate a lump. Yeah. That is called breast mouse. It's, it's slippery, moves about so much. Yes. It's um, nothing to worry about. Most of them will go away. But when you palpate any lump, you still need to confirm with your doctor. You should still see your doctor. Even though we know most of the food that fall within that age bracket, it's a normal finding in them that will disappear with time. So when you do that on one breast, you do the same on the other breast. And then you can palpate the axilla too. The axilla, the armpits go um, medially upwards backwards and then downwards. You are checking for any hardness. They are what we call lymph nodes. Okay. When there are issues with the breasts, when there is any infection or any cancer of the breast, the place where it sends it to first of, the first uh, point of call when it wants to spread is the lymph node. That's wicked. The axillary lymph node. From the axillary lymph node, it can be disseminated to other parts of the body, including the lungs, the brain, the liver, the abdomen. It's a painful way to die. Mm. So, so, so now um, the doctor is going to demystify another myth about mm. breast cancer. What is it? Okay, so increasingly with the proliferation of churches and different pastors and other religious leaders that 
have different powers to cure different things. Okay. I've had patients that presented with a breast lesion and then you do your test and do histology and it comes out that it's a breast cancer. And then she was referred to Luth. At Luth she was told she was going to have a radical mastectomy as in to take off the whole of the breast tissue because like I said before, the cancer can spread to other parts of the body. When it's limited to the breast alone, you can have a surgery, take off the whole breast and then the person is fine. But when, usually when it's done, it's fellow the chemotherapy to kill other tumor siblings that may have escaped that we can't see with the naked. So at the time she presented, it was something localized to the breast. So she was told that she was going to have radical mastectomy. But she said no way, she wasn't going to lose her breast. She wanted to have her breast. And she declined and defaulted and stopped coming to clinic. And two years after, she came to the hospital, now very sick. The ulcer on the breast is now large, fungating, smelling, producing plenty pores. You can't even stay with her. Every half cloth is all soaked. It's now a very big mass. And she now came and said she is now ready for the mastectomy. At that stage, you can't do mastectomy for her. It was chemotherapy. As it was. She's so sick, she might not even stand the chemotherapy. So I asked her, where have you been for these two years? He said she went to this church and they were praying for her. And then they gave her Moringa seed. He told her, you take Moringa seed, it, God will heal you. Or the Moringa seed will heal you. She said she's taking various things. And as she presents at this stage. At that stage, the outcome is poor, whatever you do, anywhere in the world. So, she passed on a few days after she came. Yeah. So that's the thing. So when they tell you you have breast cancer, you should drink this herb, you should take this moringa seed, or we'll pray for you, God will do it. Yeah, we all believe in God. God does miracles. But God don't come down from heaven to, He walks through people. And now we have science, we have medical knowledge and we we'll know these things. So, you should better listen to your doctor. Anybody that tells you drink this Moringa acid is going to take it, it's not true. And they will finish your money. Like that one, they drained of her finances. Those people she was seeing, they will tell you, those Moringa seeds they sell to her, they are not cheap, they are very expensive. But they will do little to her, or they will even do her more harm than good. Yeah, so that's one lesson, or one thing I want to tell everyone. Uh, when you have health issues, there are doctors. Doctors are trained to be able to treat uh, health issues or give you the best of advice on how to go about it and not maybe the religious people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bora, for, mm -hmm. for being with us. I want to cry. You want to cry? <laughs> that was my aunt. Seriously? You know her? She was my aunt. Uh, yeah, that was my um, mom's younger sister. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> she died um, last year. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. They will come. And yeah, then you are telling us something there. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And please remember to go get checked for breast cancer if you think that you have um, any cause for alarm. Now, even if you do not have a cause for alarm now, remember the quadrants that we've learned, how to check the cell, how to check the armpit area, just be safe everybody and let's fight breast cancer out of Nigeria and pass on the education to your children, to your friends, to as many people as possible. Doctor, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, today. thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay.